Welcome to Citizen Sleeper on the Xbox One. Citizen Sleeper on the Xbox One. I'm going to start a new game. Turn on the magnifier. These are the classes that you can choose. First, there's the machinist. The machinist repairs and modifies automated systems used in industrial resource extraction. Sleepers assigned to machinist work are usually diligent, careful, and structured people. Here's their skills. Operators. They work with drones and high-precision remote machines to perform complex tasks from a distance. Sleepers assigned to operator work are usually cerebral and precise people. And this is the one I'm going to be playing with, the Extractor. Extractors work on resource extraction, often in hard vacuum environments. Sleepers assigned to extractor work are often confident, self-sufficient, and have a high level of endurance. That's for damn sure. Damn. So they're automated cyborgs and- He's a dandy guy in space. They transferred their bodies out, kind of like in Ghost in the Shell, and they wear spacesuits. Who wants one? Don't get blocked. Don't get back hacked. Don't get pimp slapped. The first thing you become aware of on waking is the disconnect, the delay between thinking and feeling, between wanting to act and acting. Minor, almost imperceptible, but always present. Where are you? Unknown. It's at its worst when waking, when yourself has spent many dark hours recalling what it was like to be real, to be a person, to be in a body that was indisputably yours. Think of that body. A leap into a cold lake on a hot day. The sting of blood welling from a fresh wound. The friction of a fingertip. All of a sudden, the memories are closer than you thought, blurring as you approach them until you can't tell one from the other. The cold slips in, behind and around you, and the sensations, they all fade out of reach. Perhaps you should be thankful for the dull nature of this new body, given your current circumstances. The walls of the container feel immediately present, cold, hard at your back and face, cramping your limbs. You resist the desire to stretch, knowing that the claustrophobia comes next, and retreat a little from your central nervous system. It isn't painful, not like you used to know pain. At least. In emergency mode, pain is a message delivered with efficiency and ease, a reminder that harm is imminent. There's no insistent throb, no trembling nerves, just a warning delivered with the banal quality of a digital notification. Right now, there are thousands of them. Remember the plan. You mostly remember that it wasn't a good plan, but then your options were limited. And once you got the itch to get out, by any means possible, it was either that plan or something much worse. This meant freedom. It was at least simple. Collapse the shaft, drift away in the chaos, and slip into cargo processing. Seal yourself into one of the containers, and then just hope that the freighter left before you were noticed. Some were lost in the shaft. 
Others never found the meeting point. Only a few made it to the containers. But the freighter, as far as you know, departed. That feels like enough. Enough to know that you might no longer be on that grim and heartless rock. Even if, in the airless hold of a freighter, you might freeze solid long before you reach any destination. Try to rest. But you are restless. It's been a long time since you left, surely weeks, maybe even months. You are dully aware of the damage to your legs and your right arm. You've been reserving energy as much as possible, but your body still needs to shut down many of its systems to protect you. You've spent much of that time asleep, knowing that anything else would have been impossible to endure. You feel the weight of that impossibility begin to gather. It's time to sleep again, to nudge this false body into inducing delta waves in your emulated mind, and once again recoil into a dream of when you were once a person. Rest. Time passes. The cold creeps further in. You feel something. Warmth. Not true warmth, but the indication of its presence. Your joints release from their rigor. Sound, too, everywhere. Screeching and shimmering so loud that your body ducks your hearing to protect its sensors. Then light. White as the cold. Softer and softer, until... In a haze of dirty yellow, a figure appears. You are out. The satellite view of your position. It's been a few hours since Dragos pulled you from the container. You sit huddled in a corner of his scrapyard, swaddled in the reflective folds of a mylar blanket. You are slowly coming back to consciousness, back to life, and you stare at the ornately curving element of an improvised heater. You're surrounded by angular, incoherent lumps of ships. Just their hollowed out bodies, husks of salvage and frames, some corroded beyond recognition and others still carrying glassy wounds along their edges where a plasma arc sliced them apart. As you trace their shapes with fogged eyes, you hear a voice. So, sleeper, you all thawed yet? Stay silent. Never seen one of you come in like this. New frames must have better perseverance than Sub-Zero Vac. Seen more than a few of you frozen solid to hole plates or inside the outer locks in my time. They weren't so lucky. Dragos comes into focus, shrouded in makeshift tech, his headset with its glinting eyes the mark of a drone operator. On his shoulder, one of his symbiotically linked drones perches, its irising eye locking you with an unflinching stare as it scans. Dragos, a pragmatic and private salvager. Last living sleeper that came through this yard was a while ago. They didn't last long. You struggle to read his expression beneath the tech, but he seems lost in memory for a moment. Or perhaps he's just figuring out what to do with you. What happened to them? you ask. He ignores your question. I want to ask what led you to do it. To sell yourself to a corporation. I suppose you know you can't go back. Your old body, that's theirs now. And you're just software now. A rogue emulation illegally possessing corporate property. You nod along. You remember biometrically signing the forms the cold floor on your feet as you padded to the sleeper cells, the promise of a life off-world. But as you do, you get the now-familiar sensation that these aren't your memories. 
These are dreams from an external from an external shell. One that is no longer yours. One that is no longer you. Dreams and reveries of what you once were. You now get the familiar sensation that these aren't your memories. These are things you know, but not things you feel. You are no longer that person. You are an offshoot, a copy. What you don't know is what's ahead. At least the last one didn't. There's no easy way to put it. That body of yours is falling apart. It's the same for any sleeper who makes it out. SNR wants to protect their property, but if they can't keep hold of you, well, then no one can. You remember that, too. Or at least rumors of it from the other sleepers. Planned obsolescence. A built in dependence on regularly administered supplements and regular maintenance that were part of your routine. Stop getting them and your body begins to shut down, separating from your emulated mind and all its parts. How long has it been? How long do you have left? But for now, sleeper, you're one of the lucky ones. Dragos glances up and away towards the glassy dome of the yard. The eye is the best place you could be right now. The eye? The station. You'll see soon enough. Dragos impatiently shifts his weight. Look, I've got things to be getting on with. He trails off. It's an old freighter container I've been using as storage out in the stacks. We haven't been pulling in much valuable scrap these days, so you're welcome to use it. It should be pretty empty. Something wells up inside of you. Emotion, fatigue, gratitude. You're unsure. Shakily, you get to your feet. All right, then. Well, you head on up there. You look like you need some rest. And with that, Drago stalked back to the Rex, his drone already converging on a rusting hulk. Plasma Flash is silhouetting its spindly figure as he returns to work. Welcome to Erlen's Eye. Life on the Eye runs in cycles, during which you can talk to characters, explore areas of the station to unlock more areas, and perform actions. At the end of each cycle, you need to head to your current home to rest. Resting will move time forward on the station. Head to the empty container location to rest and end the cycle now. I can't, uh... I can't go anywhere yet. Empty container, your home for now. All cycles need to end, rest, and prepare for the next one. End cycle. <laughs>